Hi there guys, this is uh, Stephen. Um, I'm back now with another unboxing video, uh, this time for the Protectorate of Menoth. Um, I ended up doing Protectorate of Menoth for a local journeyman league. Um, I hope to get a video up soon um, that basically runs down all the purchases I have um, and why. Um, to be honest, I wasn't really that fussed about Harbinger. Um, I have already got my two casters for the journeyman league, um, but I found her going really, really cheap. Um, and I figured that the local players should really see what Harbinger can do um, in case they get a little unstuck when having to face her at a later date at like some other tournament or uh, or event outside of our local meta. Um, given she is a very popular caster, um, when we get to her card you'll see why. Um, she's quite good. Um, model wise, I've heard that the model is an absolute nightmare to put together. So I guess we will we'll find that out when I actually get around to assembling it myself there's a receipt there, probably didn't need that um, there's one of her cards uh, let's get the other one out right and there's the other one so let's go model wise first um, there's a great big bent banner which I assume is supposed to be going on her back yep judging by the artwork that's not supposed to be as bent as it is that's supposed to be straight that's a good start. Oh, it's quite flimsy as well. Oh, that's going to be fun to glue. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there we go. And we've got some flowing robes. She's on a large base. So more flowing robes. Uh, some more flowing robes. So yeah, I can already see this is going to be a bit of a, a fiddly build. There's one of the guys who's dragging her along. Uh, it's her torso. Let's see if we can get a nice... Or we could drop it on the floor instead of getting a close up. That would be uh that'd also be an option. Um let's have a look. I guess it's actually quite a nice sort of model. It's quite a nice bit of detail on it. Um there's like I said, it, it looks like it's going to be quite a fiddly build as uh, one of the guys that drags her around. Um, so it'll be um, it'll certainly be interesting to put together. We'll um, I'll have to definitely give a report as to how how difficult it was when I finish it. Because um, I have heard horror stories, but we will see. Um, this, I think, might be one of the issues where... Oh, there we go, actually. It does have a... There's a how to build Harbinger on the back of the box, um, which is actually going to be quite helpful given that she, as I said, looks a little bit like a nightmare. Um, but, you know, we'll we'll give it a go. Um, so what we'll do is we'll now go straight onto her card. Um, right, so the first thing that stands out is, yes, that is a focus stat of 10. Um, she's speed 6, strength 4, mat 3, rat 1, defense 14, armor 14, command 10. Uh, command 10 is also important. Um, she's power eight, uh, sorry, power strength twelve, magical melee weapon, no ranged attacks. Uh, she has seventeen boxes, five warjack points. Um, so focus ten is pretty outstanding. Everything else, um, other than the command ten, is pretty average. Um, there's nothing insanely good there. Um, however, when we flip over the card and then when we start looking at the spells and feet, you'll actually realise that she's quite nice. Um, so, she has the Divinity Rule. This model cannot be knocked down and never suffers blind. Its front arc extends to 360. Uh, so you can't backstrike it, you can't knock her over. Okay, so defence 14, armour 14. I suppose she could camp up to armour 24. It's alright. Um, she won't be camping though. Uh, she has an ability called Awe, which is while in this model's command range, 10 inches, uh, living enemy models suffer minus 2 to attack rolls. Okay, that's pretty good. That means if you're trying to kill her in melee or within 10 inches, uh, she becomes defense 16 equivalent. Uh, she also has something called Martyrdom. When a friendly faction non warcaster warrior model in this model's command range is disabled, this model can suffer D3 damage points to cause the disabled model to heal one damage point. That's like take D3 damage and auto pass a tough roll, but don't be knocked over. Quite nice. Um, you know, <laughs> that will keep a unit alive. Um, especially if you can keep her alive with a shield guard or something similar. Um, she also automatically hits with all her melee attacks. Um, so that power trick 12 isn't looking quite so bad anymore, especially with that mat 3. Um, you know, boosted power 12s. 
um, can kill casters if you can get her into a caster. Um, that's not recommended because if it goes wrong, it's going to go very, very, very wrong. Um, so we'll look at her spells and her feet now. Uh, so we've got Cataclysm, cost 4, range 8, POW 20, AoE 5. Target enemy model is automatically hit. Reduce the base POW of Cataclysm by 1 for each full inch between the target and this model. Blast damage affects only enemy models, and Cataclysm has no effect if the target model is out of range. Interesting. Um, I don't know how often that will come up. Um, point being, I never knew that Harbinger had this spell until I looked on the card. Um, so that shows you how often it gets cast by people. Uh, Crusader's Call. Cool. Friendly faction models beginning a charge on this model's control area. Gain plus two movement. Quite nice. Uh, everyone loves extra movement on the charge. Um, basically, it's charge plus five. So you're looking at about an 11 inch charge range on average. Um, for a uh, for an infantry model perhaps um, slightly shorter for a jack but again yes that does help with jacks because it's just friendly model uh, you've got fear of odd got fear of odd fear of god uh, target enemy model unit cannot give orders receive orders or make special attacks range 10 cost 2 it's an upkeep so yes um, very very good um, you're about to be charged by someone you don't want to be charged by whack that out on them um, yeah <laughs> It, it's pretty decent, um, especially as it's an upkeep, so you can just leave it out there. Um, it's probably a good job it's not an upkeep, otherwise she could spam it five times in a turn, which is never good for anyone. Especially with focus 10, she's probably going to be hitting. Um, so next spell is Guided Hand. Target friendly model unit gains an additional die on each, melee's first, each, each model's first melee attack roll this turn. Um, this isn't an upkeep, so this is totally spammable. Um, if you're running her with a lot of melee infantry, especially if any of them have crit effects. Um, that's really, really helpful. Um, it guarantees that you will hit on your your turn. And then if you get the Harbinger close enough, it means retaliatory strikes are going to be more difficult to hit you due to her awe. So quite nice. Um, and then everyone's favourite spell at the bottom, Purification. Uh, continuous effect, Anamai, and upkeep spells in this model's control area, immediately expire for three, and she has the focus to cast it. Um, this whole package that she brings, especially when you see her feet in a minute, um, makes her one of the better tournament casters in the entire game, um, in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinions, because she often gets fielded. Um, so now we'll see the feet, which is also just some extra amazing bonus, um, which also helps with uh, with scenario um presence so for one round advancing enemy models that end their movement in the harbingers control area that's right in her 20 inch control area closer to her than when they began suffer an unboostable pow 14 damage roll so that will kill most infantry um including chill guarded infantry um unless they are immune to fire um you know that feat even puts to her on jacks um, when you're doing a couple, dinging a couple of points here and there on even an armor 20 jack, you know that's a very respectable feat. And as I said, it's very good for scenario presence. Um, given how big her control range is, you could potentially feat on turn one if you go second to stop your opponent getting into zones um, to get like you know. I mean, if you charge, if you're going second, you're 10 inches up the board already. Um, I know this is getting a bit dangerous, but if you then charge Harby another nine up the board, um, I mean, even if you walk her six, um, she's still then 16 inches, and then another, she's 36 inches onto that board with her feet. Um, that would stop enemies walking into zones. Um, she's an amazing scenario caster. She's got spells to back up just everything she does. Um I'm quite looking forward to getting her assembled. Well, not to getting her assembled, we're getting her some play time in with her. Um, we'll see how the getting her assembled bit goes and um, whether or not I rip the model to pieces. Um, we'll see how that goes. But I am quite looking forward to giving her a go, just basically to show people what she's capable of. Don't think I've got the, the protectorate models to uh, to run her particularly effectively because um, I don't have one of the three mainstay infantry units. Um Mostly because I built my protectorate as an anti-infantry army rather than an anti, uh, well, rather than as a tournament army. Basically, I was trying to discourage infantry spam um, in our journeyman league, so I built a lot of uh, a lot of anti-infantry tech, which didn't necessarily include infantry myself. Um, so I don't have any temple flame guard, I don't have any zealots, and I don't have any um, errants. Um, 
I should probably get around to getting errands because they're quite good. Um, but at the moment, like I said, I've got almost 50 points of Protectorate. Um, I, I probably do need an infantry unit, um, to, especially to run Harbinger more effectively. Um, but that's like way down the line. I'm not that fussed about them at the moment. Um, but I imagine if I'm going to be plus play testing or, or running Harbinger, um, I may need to actually look into getting an infantry unit, or perhaps we have, do have a couple of protectorate players, so see if I can borrow Errants off them or something, just to to give give her a proper run. Right, so that's the end of that unboxing video. Um, apologies, that one was quite a long one, um, but the Harbinger really, really wants some discussion about. Um, I'll be back soon with some more unboxing videos, so until then, thank you for watching. This is Scapegoat Stephen saying goodbye. <laughs>